Today's video, we're going to be covering the ins and outs of the Elite PI Designer software. I'm joined today with Stacy Carlin. She is the head trainer for the Elite PI Designer at CE Electronics. Hello, Stacy. Hello, everybody. Uh, Stacy, let's go ahead and dive into the uh, Elite Designer. All right. Well, there are three things that you're going to need to have downloaded to your host computer prior to being able to make any changes to the screens. The first thing you're going to need is our eDesigner software, and you can get that from our website. We'll show you how to do that here shortly. And if you are using the building's Ethernet system to update the screens, you'll need our transfer software. Both of these can be update or downloaded from our website, but you will need your IT department's help to do that. So make sure that you schedule some time with them and download both of these to your host computer. I also wanted to interject and say that if you also cannot connect a uh, computer through Ethernet to the Elite PIs, you can also connect them uh, via a computer through a USB. Uh, Correct. If the computer is within close proximity to the uh, uh, service room. If the computer is not within close proximity to the service, the control room, and you still are not able to connect via Ethernet, we can run two shielded twisted pairs from the computer of your choice to the control room, and from there, uh, the, the board in the control room will connect to the elites and you can connect a URXTX. It's a product that we sell and it converts the two shielded twisted pair to a USB signal that you simply plug in your computer and so there's three different options that you have for connecting a computer to the elites. Okay, very good. The third thing that you're going to need that um, I don't have an icon for here is your collection of graphics. And that is uh, typically designed by our graphic department here. We'll send you the original set, and then you would make changes to that set. Um, and uh, if you don't already have that, we can send that to you in a link version. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open the eDesigner. When you open the eDesigner, it looks like this. It's just a big gray box. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to File, and you're going to open your set of graphics. Once you've opened it the first time, your project will remain down here in your recent works, and you can just click on it from here, there on out. But for the first time, you have to hit Open, come down here to Files of Type, change it to Collections.zip. And then find your project, click on it, and hit open. And then your collection will uh, fill the editing window. There are a couple things I usually want to want to go over here. The elements may move around the screen on each project, but typically you're going to have these things. Of, um, on a screen. You're going to have a banner which will have the name or logo of the building. You have direction indicators both up and down. You'll have floor marking information. You'll have time and date. This box here is the message window. This is the area that you as a building owner have control over. This, this, box, this out here is what we have designed for you, and if you want to make changes to this, you'll need to contact us and we can work that out with you. But this, you have complete control over content. So in order to make changes to this area, the first thing you need to do is left click on it, and you'll kind of see these little tabs showing up in the corners to say that you've selected this box. Then you'll right click to bring up this dialog box. There are three message types that share this box. I'm just going to briefly go over all three of them. 
The first message that you see mentioned in the dialog box is a priority message. These messages have already been created and stored. You don't have to worry about them, but they have to do with the status of the elevator. So things like fire return, nudging, independent service, they each have their own little message that will show up and they are higher priority than these other two kinds of messages. So this message will trump whatever's being shown on the screen because it's a higher priority message. So if you're in fire return, you'll wanna see that information over what floor you're on or a scheduled message. If there's no priority messages, then these two will continue to show up. And the priority messages typically are not changed, is that correct? That's correct. They're already designed and in your system and you don't have to worry about them. Per safety elevator code, they are there and, and not, to be, not to be changed. Correct. The second kind of message that will show up in this box is a floor-based message. And these are tied to the floor marking. So when an elevator comes and stops at a particular landing, a message will show up. So if you had a particular building uh, or tenant that you wanted to have their logo show up in this window when the floor came, when the elevator came to their floor and stopped. Let's say on floor three, you have a particular uh, client that you want their logo to show up. You would then create a floor-based message that is tied to that landing. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. But we're going to start with scheduled messages. So prior to uh, creating the messages, though, we need to find out how large of a message box that you have to create your slides in. So we're going to do that by clicking on properties. This particular message box is 584 pixels wide by 481 pixels high. Now this is important because this program is a management program. It's not where you're going to create your slides. You will need to create your slides outside of this program in another one, either Photoshop or Publisher, something that will allow you to create your slide in a pixel size form format. So um, whatever program you choose, whatever you're most familiar with is fine, just as long as it can be 584 by 481. So for example, if I were to open up Photoshop and I go to File, New, this is where I'd be putting in the width and the height. So you just need to remember that you are 484 by, four, by 584 by 481. And something too to remember, this is the size of this particular window. Your window will be a different size. You'll need to check the properties to find out what your magic numbers are. Thereafter, the number will never change. So you can put that on a post-it note and stick it on your monitor to know that every slide you create has to be that particular size in pixel. Yes, that's how you create, and specifically Photoshop, and it's relatively the same for uh, other free photo editing softwares uh, that you can find on the internet. Um, but just in particular, File, New, and then this is where you would put the width and the height. I also have another video that goes even further into depth in explaining how to specifically make sure that you're, you're designing within your window properties, uh, and I'll go ahead and put a link for that right now. All right, let's go ahead then and uh, move forward to creating our scheduled message, our first scheduled message. And that brings up this editing window. And I want to draw your attention to the upper right hand corner of the editing window to max messages. Now our system can actually handle 150 slides uh, in this little carousel here. This is telling you though that right now there are nine that have been created for this particular collection. And you navigate between each of those by using this up down button and you can scroll through and see the slides that have already been created. Now eight 
and 9 are blank. So we can play with this one. If you fill 8 and 9 and you want to add more, you just hit this little plus sign to add additional blank slides. Now there are three ways to write on a slide. The first way is just basically to type on this black blank slide. And you would come down here to this white area, click on it to put your cursor in that area, and just type away. Oops. All right, and then you can uh, move the uh, text to the center of the screen. You can use this area here, word processing tools, changing the font, the size, you could change the color as well, um, and justification. These are shadow and highlight um, directions and what those colors are, so you can play with all of that kind of stuff. That is the first way to write on a slide. Uh, if that doesn't appeal to you, you just highlight and hit delete, you're back to a blank slide. The second way to write on a slide is using this insert image button it looks like a camera you'll click on that and it will take you to your desk your hard drive where you have already created slides in your particular pixel size and saved it to your hard drive so I have a couple of slides here that I have created for other clients unfortunately I don't know that they're going to be the size for this particular window we'll just go ahead and see what we get I'll click on it and hit open. And this slide is actually too small for this frame. You can kind of see that because there's this black ring all the way around. That's interesting that you say that the, the black ring, uh, if you see a black ring around your image, that will notate instantly that the image that you created is not specifically the size of the dimensions that you're shooting for. And, and then again, if it looks like it's too big uh, that something something was done wrong and you need to double check and make sure that the properties of the dimensions of the window that you're editing for are put in properly when you go to file new that your width and height equal what the properties are for your scheduled message box so that's that you don't want to see black rings around your image and you don't want your image to be too big. Correct. And then there is a third way to be able to write on a slide. And this is that you can write over the top of your image. And that you just bring your cursor down to the end of the file name of the image and hit enter. And you can type um, something like that, be able to uh, center it on the uh, screen the way that you like it so that it looks something like that. Uh, so once you've got your image the way that you like it, you'll want to come down here and begin to schedule uh, when this screen will be valid to show up on your um, screens in your cab. Now the, the way that I like to do it is that I would use this set as valid button. And that just makes this slide valid all, all the time. And you can see that by the start times 12 a.m., the end times 11.59 p.m., the start date was back in 1996, and the end date doesn't end until 2036. This is duration in seconds. Now, um, I would highly say, I would recommend that you only you know, use about five seconds. People don't need that long of a time to recognize what's on the screen. And you want to be able to have more screens show up in one trip. And you can do that by making their duration not as long. This is <clears throat> that the screen will be valid when the elevator is moving in the up direction. And then this is when the valid, valid when the elevator is moving in the down direction. So you can actually have different slides available for different, uh, for the same trip. So up and down would be different. Uh, I had one customer use the up uh, direction 
for information that's happening in the building that day, and the down direction would be for information as people exited the building that day. Maybe there's construction nearby, that kind of thing, and so that they would need to be aware of that as they left the building. This here are the days of the week within this range. So if you are a professional building, maybe you don't want the slides showing up on Saturday and Sunday. Or I had one uh, customer where the, um, there was a cafeteria in the building and he had a meatloaf special on Tuesdays. So he made a slide about his meatloaf special and it's only valid on Tuesdays. So that's kind of how this area works. If you don't like what you've done, you just hit clear period, it goes back to blank. Or instead of hitting set as valid, you can go through and set things manually um, on your own for whatever you uh, desire. Now that we've got everything the way we want it, we've got our graphics the way we want it, we've got our time scheduled the way we want it, we will go ahead and, and hit this green check mark to save our new work to the queue to be squirted out to our uh, elevator screens. But before we do that, I want to show you that there are two ways that you can delete a slide. The first way is, let's say you've created the slide and there may be use for this slide again in the future. Um, and so you've typed your specifics on it. We're just going to get rid of the, the typing by, by uh, highlighting it and hit delete. But I want to save this slide for later, so I'll just hit clear period. And this slide will remain in my carousel up here, available to be used, but it won't show up on the screens out in the elevators because it's not ever been set as valid. So it's not a valid screen, it'll just stay in there and not be used. However, let's say we did have the blood drive and it was an awful, awful uh, failure, we're never going to do it again, so we would still need to hit clear period to get rid of the validation of the of the schedule and then we would highlight the file folder and hit delete and that brings us back to a blank slide so those are the two ways that you can delete you can delete um, the specifics just by um, getting rid of the the scheduled time or you can delete it altogether by getting rid of the scheduled time and the uh, slide itself all right, let's go ahead then and move on. Um, if you hadn't hit the green check mark, it's going to ask you this. So go ahead and, and hit save yes. I'm going to hit no because we're not going to save the things that I've done today. The next thing I wanted to go talk to you about again is that editing a floor based message. So we'll go ahead and click on that. If you notice, the editing window looks much the same. The only thing is we're missing the scheduling area down here. And um, the reason for that is because these are going to be true all the time. So we don't have to schedule them as to when they're true. It's always true. Instead of uh, messages, we're dealing in floors here. And all of your floor markings will already have been programmed into the system. So you just have to choose the floor that you're going to uh, make an addition to. So let's go ahead and choose floor 15. And uh, there are three same ways that you can write on a slide. Um, you can type directly on the blank slide. If, if I could type. Um, you can, uh, you know, highlight it and change the, the font color. Um, same kind of uh, word processing tools as before, font, size, color, all that kind of stuff. Again, uh, highlight and shadow direction. Um, if, however, you would rather um, have an image, a logo image, this is again where you would use the insert an image, that little camera, you'd click on that and you will have created a slide of that logo 
in the pixel size that you have for your message window in another program and have saved it to your um, hard drive. So now um, I just have a few of these where someone has uh, created me a, a, a white thing that says 15th floor. So we'll go ahead and use that. And then again, the third way to write on a slide is on top of the image, just by clicking at the end of the file name, putting your cursor there, hitting enter. Uh, and then again, you can uh, center it on the screen, however you want to see it. So those are the three ways that you can insert a logo or a name on a floor-based message. Now, this is uh, this is something that's really interesting and very helpful to use, especially in buildings that you know you want to welcome a new tenant or you want to make your tenants feel a little more welcome by giving them a sense of floor ownership. So mm. if the elevator arrives at the 15th floor and that floor is owned by a certain tenant or company, you can display their logo. You can also do things uh, if your floors are split. You can say uh, one tenant is to the left of the elevator. As you exit the elevator, go left. Uh, the other tenant uh, turn right. You can uh, go as far as to, uh, let's say, your elevator is uh, for a hotel. You can add floor maps to floor-based messages so people know that when they get to their floor they can look for their room number within the floor message and as soon as the elevator leaves that floor the floor message would go away. So you can do a lot of different things with uh, floor messages. You can even add things like um, the pool is on this floor, take a picture of your pool, type over the image and say, you know, pool pool level uh, and put that on that landing or conference room, take a picture of your beautiful conference room and, and, and put the title on that and then enter that. So like uh, JD said, you can do a lot with floor-based messages to make building navigation a breeze. So again, once you've got things the way that you want and it looks good to you, go ahead and click on this green check mark to save it to the queue. I'm not going to at this time. I'm going to go ahead and hit no, but you should probably hit yes. Alright, so now we have um, talked about the three types of messages that go on in this uh, area. The next thing I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is layout state. Now, uh, what we want to do with this is be able to show you what your screens are going to look like out on the um, out in the elevator cab so this is uh, this button is the button we're going to play with now it looks like an exacto knife with a square and a ruler it's in the depressed state now which means it's in design mode and you can kind of tell that by the dotted and dashed lines that designate each area so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and that brings this now to a run mode and you can actually use the keys on your keyboard to put it through its paces. So using the up and down arrow on your keyboard, you can make this go uh, as if it was going up and down the shaft in the elevator. So if we had saved something on floor 15, <clears throat> I would get to floor 15 and click on the O key, the O for open, door open key and then when the doors were open you would see the floor based message image show up here in our message box then when the car starts moving again going in the down direction you would see that these images then <clears throat> would go back to scheduled based messages now to uh, move the scheduled messages right now this is going to change in the format that it was designed for it will you know, change over every couple seconds, but you can use your left and right arrow keys to key through them quickly, just to make sure that they're in the right um, order, that the, it's exactly what you wanted to see on each slide prior to sending them out to the screens in the elevator. Okay, so 
We've hit our green check marks on both of our scheduled and floor-based messages. We've used the layout key. We know exactly what everything looks like. And now the next thing we're going to do is send the um, new graphics that we've created out to the screens. So for that, you're going to want to come up here to File, and you'll go to Save As. Now, I would recommend that you uh, use our naming convention, continue with it. It's basically your project name, our job number, and then a date code. So just change the date code and hit save, and that will save your new graphics to your hard drive. All right, so we would go ahead and hit save. The, the, the big reason that you want to do that and stay up on that is that let's say that you do something and you realize that uh, a graphic you added was wrong or let's say you accidentally uh, moved one of the position indicating arrows and you realize this after the fact and and you, you want to go back to the design that you had before the goof up well if you have a folder filled with uh, uh, files that you've saved periodically and just change the date code you can see what the last one was and then go one before that and that is one that's a way that you can fix any mistakes that you may have made exactly okay so once we have saved as there are a couple different ways that you can get the new file out to your screens if you are using a USB stick you'll come here and click on make USB installer and you will then find that new file name we just made with your project name, our job number, and the date code. You'll find that on your hard drive. And we are then going to save it to that USB stick. The USB stick has to be completely empty. It has, it has to be formatted, but it has to be empty. And it has to be saved as this name. You cannot change the name because our screens are only looking to update from something that has this name on it. So each time you use the USB installer, you'll need to clear it and install the new graphics with this name on your USB stick. Basically, what, what that means is the, the screen itself is specifically looking for a file called usbinstaller.zip. If it doesn't see that file, it's going to reject your USB stick. If you have named the file 200 Street Estates uh, .zip, it's not going to recognize it as USB installer .zip. So you don't want to custom name the .zip file per your uh, design. You just want to leave it as USB installer .zip. Also, there is another uh, helpful video specifically going into detail on uh, exporting to a USB stick and making sure that you plug the USB stick in properly into the back of your either into the back of your Elite Designer or in the provided USB slot in your COP. Uh, and I'll go ahead and provide a link to that right now. Perfect. <clears throat> then also another way of sending. Um, your screens uh, out to the um, or sending your new slides out to the screens is via the buildings Ethernet system and uh, we're going to go ahead and show that now all you had to do was use a set you do the save as for this and save the new graphics to your hard drive and that requires a different software so we're going to X out of this and open the transfer software and it just takes just a second here. All right. So when you open the transfer software, this software is just basically a task manager. So we're going to create a task for it to go and get the new um, designs that you've just created and send them out to the screens. The first thing you're going to have to do is come to this little green button with the white plus sign on it, add a task. Before, before we get to that, I also wanted to point out that uh, this software will need to be set up with uh, 
your IT department to make sure that it is talking to our Elite PIs if you are going through the Ethernet. If you are going through the other two options, whether it be USB using a close, close proximity computer in the control room, or whether it be through two shielded twisted pairs uh, connected to our URX TX USB conversion, uh, those two ways can also be uh, can also utilize the Elite PI Transfer Control Center. Uh, you would just need to call our tech support and he can easily run you through the steps of setting up the your computer to talk with our elites. It's very simple. Each screen uh, will get an IP address in that setup, so that's how we will be able to communicate to each individual screen. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on this green circle with the white plus sign and this new window comes up and it asks you to create a name. This is really inconsequential, it doesn't matter um, what the name is. And then you'll use the pull down to choose the type of task that we're doing and we're doing a collection update at this point. It chooses a color and then you'll use this button as the browse button to go to your um, hard drive and pick up that uh, new collection that we created. Remember the project name, our job number, and the new date code. You're going to go to your hard drive and find that new collection. And then you'll come to displays. And um, my, uh, hard, my um, hard drive is not connected to any screens right now, so there aren't any slides or any screens showing up here. But your screen, once it's connected and has a good communication link to each screen, you'll have a listing of each screen and they'll be all in this blue non-selected color. Each screen will show up here. What you want to do in this slide is to be able to select which cars are going to get the new update. Just by clicking on them, you'll turn them into this neon green color and uh, this way you can actually have certain screens that are set, you know, doing one set of graphics or another set of screens would be another set of graphics. You don't have to select all of them each time. So you can have different screens doing different graphics at the same time. So once you've selected all of the different screens that you want to have the new update, you'll go to schedule. And this particular task, we're only going to ask it to do it once. We only need it to send the new update one time. <clears throat> and you're going to want to uh, pick the send time and then the, the run time. And I would recommend <clears throat> that you would do this like at 3 o'clock in the morning. Some downloads take a little bit of time depending on how intricate they are. And then uh, it may... Uh, I'm not quite sure what it might do uh, as the changeover is happening. So we kind of recommend that you do it at 3 a.m. so that there are the least amount of people around uh, to watch the change. And then after you have selected your send and run time, you'll use this middle button to create and run. And you know, when the task has been created, it will wait for the run time and go ahead and do that. It'll run it for you. That is uh, the end of the transfer, but uh, JD, there is one other um, task that I wanted to be able to go over, and that is um, the maintenance task of uh, checking the clocks. Absolutely. That seems to be one of the most common issues with our Elite PI systems. They have a built-in clock already, but... Typically, when these systems are either turned on or they become rebooted or every time you update them with a USB stick, the internal clock gets offset from the other surrounding elite systems that you have in your uh, elevators. And if they're not all talking to each other over a network, they don't know what everyone's time is set at. So you could have one elevator be set to 11 o'clock whereas the very next elevator right next door would be five, ten minutes off. And also, that also makes it off from everyone else's uh, watches or the time that you have on your cell phone. 
So Stacy will go over right now a real easy way that you can set up a reoccurring maintenance task to update that time. All right, and so it starts the same way. You'll hit this little green circle with the white plus sign, and we're going to uh, call it whatever, and use the pull down. This time, instead of collection update, we're going to call it a maintenance task because we want this uh, task to be done many times. We don't want to have to be the one to go in and check every week to make sure that the clocks are the same. We want the computer to go do that for us multiple times. So we're going to click maintenance. It picks a color. Again, you'll use the pull down and you'll use this update time <clears throat> as the task that it's been designed to, to do. Use uh, the display button. Here you'll pick all of the screens, turn them all to that neon green color, and then you'll hit schedule. Now instead of single run, this is where we want the maintenance task to be a recurring task. So we'll click on recurring, and you'll probably want to pick weekly, and then just pick your favorite day of the week. And then time. Uh, we recommend doing it around 3 o'clock in the morning as well because if you suffer daylight savings time as we do, that usually happens around 2 a.m. So your host computer will change at 2 and then all the screens will catch up at 3 a.m. And uh, then you would just pick start date today and date none and use create and run. And then every week on Tuesdays at 3 in the morning, it will uh, go out and make sure that all of the screens um, time clock is exactly the same. I also wanted to point out that while you're in this Elite PI Transfer Control Center, you're not seeing it now because Stacy isn't connected to any uh, Elite PI units. Uh, but while that screen is open, what you see now is just a white screen. But once you create all of these tasks, all these tasks will fill up this screen. So if you have uh, multiple tasks, 10, 12, 15 different tasks, they will all be in this uh, white box uh, that you see uh, right here. Um, so if you need to go through one and specifically run one, if you, if you set this all up on Monday and you don't need to run anything until Wednesday or Thursday, when you open this up, there will be buttons on the right that will uh, you can delete the task, you can run the task, uh, or you can edit the task. So those are different things, those are options that you can create. But I just wanted to point out that when you create a task, they will all be listed right here in this white uh, screen. Alright, well I uh, hope that this video has been informative. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to give uh, Stacy an email. I'll go ahead and put her email and contact information up on the screen right now. Um, and the other videos that I have linked throughout this will also be listed down in the video description. So if you uh, uh, expand that, you'll be able to see the other videos linked throughout this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for choosing CE Electronics.